I as a long time Tekken fan since Tekken 5. <laughs> for a second right because it was trying to cook me for the first couple of seconds of that video and i want to get on here and say tekken is the only franchise where you could say you started on a game that came out two decades ago and people will still be mad you said you were a long time fan see i've endured a lot of outrage from the elderly citizens of the youtube comment section god bless their pure souls and i want to get on here and speak for all the good-hearted hard-working and honest people that like me started playing with tekken 6 that there is absolutely no problem with saying that you're a long time fan since tekken 7 i mean if we're being real nine years is a long time you know tekken 7 came out a long time ago no no, I see you shaking your head. Don't do that. That's when you're shy for decades. Stop. So for those people who felt they deserve the title of a long time supporter of the franchise since the very faithful day two weeks ago when a malevolent spirit somehow influenced you to buy Tekken 8 and you regretted it ever since. I am with you, child. I support you. Be not afraid. With that being said, we back to talking about Tekken. This is my first video on the topic, so if you haven't watched the first, you're missing out, my guy. Tap in. But nonetheless, I'll be talking about the story, the characters, and customization of Tekken 8, as well as covering some of the topics and characters I didn't talk about in the first video. With that being said, you know the deal. Go ahead, get your little snack, bro. I'll wait. I'm not finna wait for low bro between me and you, I don't even like that nigga. But before we start, I'd like to first talk to you guys about today's sponsor, War Thunder. War Thunder is the most comprehensive vehicle combat game ever made, allowing you to take command of over 2,500 tanks, planes, helicopters, and ships of 10 major nations, ranging from biplanes and armored cars of the 1920s to the fighter jets and main battle tanks of today. Immerse yourself in the intense combat of War Thunder, full of incredibly detailed vehicles, impressive graphics, and authentic sound effects that place you right at the helm of the most powerful man-made war machines of our time. With a worldwide community of over 70 million players and an unmatched wealth of high-quality content to discover, there's simply no game better suited for fans of multiplayer combat ranging from air, land, and sea. But hey, you want to know the best part? War Thunder is completely free to play for PlayStation, Xbox, and PC. Not only that, but if you use the link provided in the description down below to sign up for a new account, or if you haven't played in over six months, you will also be eligible for a bonus pack, including multiple premium vehicles, the exclusive vehicle decorator, Eagle of Valor, 100,000 silver lions, and seven days of premium accounts. This bonus pack is only available for a limited time, so don't miss it. Once again, thank you to War Thunder for sponsoring this video. I'm gonna play War Thunder off screen, man. Number one, story. I've played the Tekken 8 story mode, loved every second of it. One thing I appreciated is how they tackled the very obvious point of Jin being the sole cause of World War 3, like last year i liked the way that they handled the aftermath it felt realistic in terms of how heavy the turmoil weighed on jin's mental specifically more than anybody else i mean i could almost relate to him in a sense i'm not exactly the cause of complete and utter death and destruction on an international scale yet but i could see myself in his shoes and thinking like damn I threw the whole globe in a straight calamity like six months ago. Fall unconscious and wake up several months later. And now these niggas dabbing me up and shit. Like, what? But it's funny that the game where Jin has his redemption arc and saves the world. Miguel is nowhere to be found. Bro made his whole existence swearing vengeance upon this nigga for two games straight. He said, I'ma wait until you yearn for the glimmer of light at the end of the tunnel. Then I'ma kill you like you're nothing. And then when the time came, this nigga pump faked like Carmelo Anthony. This sort of reminds me of how they tried to retcon Heihachi as a good person in Second 7. Despite there being like 15 different disciples of him being a disgrace to not only his family, but humanity. Heihachi make Mr. Ruckus look like a loving husband and father, bro. Nigga, did I just catch you having fun? He reminded me of what a failure I was. 
going to be. Virgin's case, it's different though, because for the most part, he's always had the same goal of ending the Mishima bloodline, the devil gene, and saving humanity. Looking back on Tekken 6, the real reason behind throwing the world into such conflict was to draw out an ancient demon to end its life and the devil gene alongside it once and for all. Whether the ends justify the means is up to you to decide, but no matter how you flip the sandwich, he made the sandwich. And that sandwich killed a lot of people. But regardless, I think it was a fantastic storyline. There are a lot of things to love about it, as well as a lot of things to dislike about it, which I will get to when I talk about the characters. But I really do have to get this off my chest regarding the story mode. Why? Why the f everybody got motorcycles? When did they just start giving this shit out? And why does everybody throw them away? More important than Nana, more importantly, why did Ikuma get one? Bro, I know this fat ass nigga not right about anybody on them bikes. There's no way he's catching up to a motorcycle with them stubby ass legs. You know how hard it would be to see Kuma do the Akira fly, bro? Kuma, he's already him if we being for real. He bought this machine my life. He can, he can sugarcoat it now. He's not going to, but he can. Now he doing that shit that little baby doing his music videos now. You know little Kuma don't play by little baby. And he can wave dash now. Back to the motorcycles, this has been a thing since the earlier tech is these riders really like motorcycles, bro. Jin canonically gotta be on like his fifth one, bro. He's like <laughs> He's lost two different bikes because he keeps throwing them at Kazuya. The third time he hit somebody car on the highway and try to leave. <laughs> If I had a nickel for every time Jin took the elevator on a f***ing motorcycle, I'd have exactly one nickel. But like, why, why do I have this nickel, you know? So, soon as I saw Jin on a motorcycle again in the beginning of Tekken 8, I knew it was finna be some dumb shit, bro. And before my very eyes, this dude gon' bunny hop off a car and ride up and off a building. Like this shit trials fusion. Ooh, that brother's floating in the air. How could his hands do this? Oh, someone get him out the air. This is some shit that Vin Diesel would do in Fast and the Furious 15 after saying, I don't have friends. I have family. <laughs> I seen this exact stunning GTA 5 four Why years ago, bro. You ain't the wrong game. I really did admire the descent into his consciousness. That was one of my favorite parts of the story. Especially that switch. <laughs> I'm not going to say it because I want to keep this video relatively spoiler friendly. But if you know, you know. The story was a fire experience, man. I kind of want to bring up the fact that G Corp had like a thousand soldiers on a field at one point. Except like four of them actually had weapons and everybody else was just throwing hands. But it's the same corporation, same leader that genetically mutated a kangaroo and a dinosaur to throw hands. So I, I'm not, not exactly sure what I was expecting. The thing about the story is I just wish that they used more legacy characters, which transitions perfectly into my next topic. See, I think the Tekken 8 roster is awesome. The new characters are cool, especially Rainer. I really like her moveset. Not a fan of that rinky dink hell sweep though. If you're gonna do a hell sweep, you better do it right and snap every single bone in your back in the process, or else you just a fraudulent machine, bro. Lakuma be doing that shit better than you. I don't know how, but he, he putting in that work. You feel me? Like that's how you know they just be teaching anybody Mashima style karate. Nigga Minaj, show how I was done. But other than that, she's a cool character. I liked her role in the story as well as Victor's. Shaheen, but my issue with the story and the roster overall is that to be honest, I, I feel that so many more characters are deserving of a place in the roster and story over others, but that we'd be lucky to even see them as DLC. And DLC is cool and all, but DLC characters don't really get character episodes. That may change with Tekken 8. I doubt it, but I'd love to be proved wrong. All right.
I was proved wrong. In the middle of writing the script, they did a tech and talk, which made me rewrite and record certain parts. But it turns out DLC characters will be getting a story mode for each of the characters to show how they might have been involved in the main story mode. This will be in the form of a free story mode expansion set to release this summer. Which is honestly the best way they could have went about this. I'm very glad they are headed this direction in regards to DLC characters. Some of this video might not age well in terms of my critiques. And I hope that's the case because I'd love to be proved wrong. Because that means the game would most likely be going in a good direction. But anyway, back to the video. They're essentially trying to make all the OG characters DLC in the same way they did it with Tekken 7 and Armor King, Lei Wulong, etc, etc. Which, from a business standpoint, you can't be mad at. It makes sense. Nobody would buy Shaheen if bro was DLC. And it's crazy to me because Shaheen is cool, I guess. But like the fact that he got a place in a story and roster over anybody else who's ever been in the Tekken game is crazy. Miguel, Kunimitsu, Lei, Armor King, Anna, Eddie, Christy, Bruce, what what y'all know about Bruce, bro? Many people will argue that the usage data of the previous games is what determines whether or not they make it to the next game. To that I say yes and no. Kuma and Panda are consistently at the bottom in terms of usage rates, but they're grandfathered in because they are two of the most iconic characters associated with Tekken. Same with King, though his mentor was much more popular and consistently higher among the top 5 to 10 most used characters in Tekken 7. Shaheen was bottom 20, so you get my point, it's, it's not the deciding factor. Back to Bruce, unless you're a longtime fan of Tekken, like me, since yesterday, you probably know nothing because Bruce Irving is the only person in this series to have been replaced three different times by three different characters. Bruce was first introduced in Tekken 2, an orphaned underground fighter who spent his whole life in rough neighborhoods, gaining a fearsome reputation as a skilled kickboxing fighter. To put his story very briefly, Bruce was then replaced by Brian in Tekken 3, whose fighting style is also kickboxing. Interesting fact about Tekken 3 specifically, many characters were replaced in this one, not just Bruce. Begdo-san, Martial Law, Jun and Kazuya, to name a few. But as for Bruce, he later returned in 5, 6, and both tag tournaments, alongside Brian. But then it was replaced again in Tekken 7 by Josie, I'm pretty sure that's how you pronounce her name, whose style is also kickboxing. But Tekken 7 also had released yet another fighter who almost died directly inherited the same Muay Thai fighting style as DLC. That fighter being Fakken Rom. Both of them went on to not have anything to do with the story and also not make it to Tekken 8's launch roster. Not only has Bruce been in five different games before them, he's had a pretty big role in the story. He was a mercenary for Kazuya and later the head of G Corporation's private army in Tekken 6 and also had a very good relationship with Kazuya. Good enough to the point where Kazuya helped this nigga fake his death and flee a country in Tekken 3. Bruce was already cool as shit it would have been so easy to include the same role of his in eight or something similar at the very least let's not have him be replaced by one-off characters i mean off rip this dude lifestyle crazy the more i think about it it's only been relatively recent that the games kind of stopped caring about the stories outside of the machinas and a direct result of that has been cutting characters that fight similar to one another but with deeply intertwined stories like king and armor king huarang and his mentor eddie and christy yoshimitsu and kunimitsu and Nina and Anna. Some of these characters were DLC in Tekken, but that doesn't disprove my point at all, considering all of their stories were put to a halt in either Tekken 6 or Tekken Tekken 2. For Nina and her sister though, it was such a missed opportunity to not have them rival each other in the battlefield along with Law and Paul, or maybe fight together like Lily and Asuka. Speaking of Asuka, I feel like if it weren't for Bruce, I'd argue she's probably been done the worst out of all the Tekken characters ever. Cause how did we forget that she has the natural healing ability of a Kazama to revert Devil Jin back to normal Jin? <laughs> this ending is not canon. But knowing she is a Kazama, you would think that she'd have at least warranted some type of involvement in the story in 6 or 7 or 8. She had like 3 lines in Tekken 8 bro. She did not exchange a single word with Jin on a 12 hour flight inches away from each other. You would think them being cousins.
You would think them being cousins, the writers would have for at least no for Aunt Jen Kazama, especially considering she was originally designed to replace her in Tekken 5. But all she had to say about that was, So this John Lady is Jen's mom? To be fair, she did go missing 7 years ago, which means Asuka would have been 11 years old at the time. But all I'm asking for is a single crumb of relevancy, bro. It's painfully easy to write some sort of importance within the plot in her, especially with what they set up in Tekken 5, canon or not. But since then, she's been a Kazama for literally no reason. She had beef with Feng cause he pulled up on her father and left that nigga in a coma. Not only is Feng chilling. He not even think about Oscar now, now he beefing with Leroy. And she just let him be, I guess. She didn't make it to the tournament, but Lily did. And to make matters worse, her ending has everything to do with Lily, but Lily's ending has nothing to do with Oscar. She's not even the resident tomboy of Tekken anymore. Now Reyna has that title, except she has a much bigger role in the story. It's cooler, less one-dimensional, and stronger. Asuka could have easily taken Reyna's place in the story in some aspects. I honestly think it'd be a much cooler dynamic to have Reyna and Asuka rival each other, considering they both have more or less the same traits, appearance and personality-wise, including being related to Jin Kazama. That would prove to be a very satisfying dynamic because of, well, major spoiler alert by the way, this would prove to have lots of potential considering Asuka has the healing ability of a Kazama, while Reyna on the other hand... You get my points. But she's too busy revolving around Lily. That's tough. She literally has nothing going on for her, bro. Brian is another example of characters outside of the main story being increasingly more one-dimensional with every new Tekken. Like many characters, he had in-depth lore in the earlier Tekkens. I'll have to thank you for giving me Power. But ended up becoming a much more simplified badass that just destroys anything in his path. Which honestly, it fits his character. I'm not too mad at it. One thing you can always count on Brian to do every time bro is on screen is laugh. <laughs> Oh hell yeah, no, you are you, you, you. And manifest an iron bar or a minigun into existence. Do pull out the minigun from his back pocket like this GTA 5. Who taught you that nigga, Trevor Phillips? I can't stand that ashy ass nigga. Dehydrated tortoise with no shell looking ass nigga. You need some pulling springs and jerkins of your life, nigga. Somebody need to get some WD-40 for your arms. I know them shits be squeaking when you do Gatlin Rush. Ain't shit funny doing all that laughing, schmuck. It's officially day 473, trying to grow my hairline back. Looking ass nigga. You need some strawberry mint hair growth oil for that widow's peak. Smuck. I don't know how this man always gets in the tournaments in the first place. He said like three words since Tekken 5. Exciting. Same with Dragonoff. How does a bear have more lines than both of these niggas combined? Speaking of Dragonoff, somebody said Dragonoff fight like somebody f***ed his wife. <laughs> And I'm telling you, that's my main reason why I don't mess with him. I don't care what fighting style this game say he got. Look at these moves and tell me he don't fight with the anger and frustration of a divorced husband. Four times over. Look! Ah. Fuck! Oh my god! Wow! Oh my god! They say his fighting style, Commander Sambo. Young Dragonoff. Between me and you, is that the name of the nigga that booty blasted your wife? I know we in the middle of a fight and we both beating the life out of each other, but you got no class, no technique, no nothing, just straight violence. You fight at me like you really going through some shit, like do you want to talk about it? Oh, uh, you haven't said a word to anybody since that faithful day. You caught them both in the act, huh? I mean, you can't let that dictate the rest of your life, nigga. That's why you 27 look at 53. You're gonna spend your future letting your mental revolve around a bad bitch from the past? Damn shame. Now unhand me, smuck. I feel like if anybody should be replaced for real, it's Marshall by his son Forrest. I think it would make perfect sense in the same way they did with Warming, as well as other characters. He did get replaced by him in 3, but Marshall replaced him in the games that succeeded. I don't say this because I don't like Marshall, but Forrest is half his age and way swaggy. They've been building up his character since Yoshimitsu's ending in Tekken 1, but he's only appeared in Tekken 3 in both tag tournaments. I don't care what Forrest got going on. You, you 27, living a happy life with a loving family? Who you- who you- who you think you is, nigga Gohan? You know how much pain and suffering I've endured as a Gohan fan. 
seeing him grow up to be extremely devoted to his scholarly studies and having a loving wife and daughter. Get your ass back on that motherfucking battlefield. I'm not playing Forrest. You finna suffer like everybody else. Look, there's a whole lot of potential there that's going under the radar, which is the case for a fat chunk of second characters, unfortunately. Last character I bring up before I move on. If you are a king main, please walk up to the stage. You, you said you play king? Yeah. All right, come here, come here. Oh, you, you, you the dude that went to get a snack. What a surprise, what a surprise. Oh yeah, uh, watch your step around those cables, please. I wouldn't want you getting hurt while on your way up here. Yeah, it's a bit of a mess going on there. You said you mean king? Oh my god, you The king of shit! Customization. It's easily the best we've seen in a franchise in a long time, I won't lie to you. You could tell this customization was a hit because as soon as the game dropped, they just started making anybody with anybody. They got LeBron in this shit. No, that is LeBron James! Slim Shady. When it comes to who talks the most, you definitely win. They done made Uncle Ruckus. For some reason, aside from the hundreds of cosplays this game has spawned, the tan, temp fade, and beard is the craziest triple threat ever. The temp fade alone is so powerful, you can just make anybody light skin in this game. That ain't large no more. That's Stephen Curry little nephew Jaden. Dude, holy fucking smokes, dude. My cut is insane. Shout out to my barber dog. That ain't Steve no more. That's Juan Carlos Pimentel, papi. I love the selection of hairstyles. Whoever came up with the idea of the hairstyle options being other characters' hairstyles, honestly give them a medal. Cause look at what we had in Tekken 7. Bro, who was using this? Who 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 in good faith is using the side parting, bro? They also had rainbow hair for everybody, and you know. Shout out all my gay niggas. But they was not cooking with this. Whatever they was cooking, I was not finna indulge in that cuisine. They also had dreadlocks in this game, and again, shout out on my black. But this looked horrible on everybody. This did not look good on a single person. Take it off, bro. Take it off. Take it off, bro. This game also proves the fact that niggas don't be ugly for real like that. They just need a good barber. Let's take Brian, for example. Off rip, he's not the most good looking character, which there isn't anything inherently wrong with. But if you give this reptile looking ass nigga a template, <laughs> hey, you feel me? This ain't much, but it's honest work. Or Fang, he looks upset. You feel me? I'd be mad too if I looked like that. But if you give him a template, why do I hear booze? I hear a lot of booze. Hold on, let me. All right. Then you give him a B, <laughs> then make him black. <laughs> now we could get up. You feel me? Respect my man, Young God Fist. Look at Dragon off. Wait, that's not. One second, he's from Russia. Boom, now he Costa Rican. Victor Chevalier. Boom, Scotty Pippen. Paul Phoenix. Boom, Jimmy Butler. There's a whole lot of healthy customization options going on in this game, which I love. But I definitely do think it could use some. Do think it could use some improvements, hey, like especially on the color schemes of some outfits. The Destroyer Karate outfit for Jin. Love this design so much. You can color everything except for the red and whites of the pants. Why? Same with this one. You can't color the flames at all. Same with Huang's outfit. You can't color some of the blue and orange bits. You can't actually color the hair white. It's gray at most. Or the eyes. The auras just look like they stink crazy. These are more nitpicks than anything, but it just doesn't make any sense to me. Like, bro, what is this dollar store version of Jin's original outfit? Why do we even look like this? I see the same fit in Party City last October. My biggest critique, though, is that they don't have more outfits from earlier games, which will most likely come over time. The amount of hard-ass outfits that were in earlier games but have never gotten any type of love since then is really sad, bro. They've recently announced the Tekken shop. 
So I am very, 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 very excited to see outfits they might be bringing back. I already have a few in mind for Jim and King. Because, you know, it's my profile picture. I'm just glad they're not charging like 500 bands for tank tops like this Tekken 6. Tekken 6's customization was a lot more in depth. The peak of customization in the series, like, they really spoiled us with it. But the prices was crazy, bro. I don't care if this tank top Rick Owens, bro. 500 bands is disgraceful. Definitely charging 500 Gs for a tank top, bro. A tank top. Either way, though, the customization is fire. Even the shoes is fire. These could low-key pass as superstars if you wave dash fast enough. Loki, I might make a video on ranking some of the Tekken fits, bro, because these is among the craziest drip I've ever seen. Not even in just games, ever, bro. For me, the only thing that would make the customization easily a thousand times better is if you could see your customized character in the cutscene, bro. Like, imagine seeing Kazuya with the fade as he showcases his thousands of sneakers. Speaking of Kazuya, he's a sneakerhead now, bro. I did research this for the last video, but forgot to mention it. This was very surprising to me that he had hobbies because it literally says in Tekken 1, his occupation was making trouble for his father. Mind you, he's 26 years old at the time, grown ass man, no job, no nothing, just living off his dad money while declaring hitting as his full time occupation. But I respect it though. If there were seven different iterations of my dad flinging me off a cliff, I'd go reverse flash on that ass nigga. He lucky nobody held a funeral for him. I swear to God, I pull up, smack him in the face and take some food to go. But all I'm saying is, don't let me catch you in any of these basketball shoes. Cause I, 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 wait, wait, something ain't right here. Rewind. Pause. Zoom in. Enhance. No. No. Zoom in. Enhance. Zoom in. Enhance. No. This can't be right. Zoom in. Enhance. Zoom in. Enhance. Kazoya. Kazoya. Michael Jordan never did that move. Kazoya. Kazoya. That's all I want to talk about for Tekken for this video. I know it's a thousand things I haven't talked about yet, and y'all gonna be on my ass about it. Look, maybe I'll talk about it in a future video. This one long as fuck to begin with. Despite all the things I've said about Tekken, it's still one of my favorite series. Right now, I'm enjoying the fuck out of 8. looking like a really really nice roadmap so far very excited for eddie and the new characters to be coming soon zofina cockroach ass is doing the worm in her outro shaheen very excited for tekken shop there are so many outfits i want to see there lucky i'm just glad it's priced somewhat reasonably it could have been much worse but honestly i just want to see more legacy characters bring back armor king bro they gotta bring his bro too they was twinning in tekken 6 on god Ha ha ha!